Um, all right. So thank you so much for joining us today. We have uh, Jessica and Walter. Um, so my name is Acacia Barnett. I am the program manager for ASU's Blackstone Launchpad, where we help students from ASU and MCCCD with career readiness and entrepreneurship. Um, and today we have started off our speaker series and it is in regards to TechSynap. Mm -hmm. And I will hand it over to Jessica and Walter to introduce themselves and just if you can tell us your title at TechSynap. Yeah, sure. Jessica, you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Gatman. I am the program manager and cybersecurity lead engineer here with TechSynap, um, specifically uh, overseeing, providing oversight on two programs that we have with our company. Uh, as you heard, my background is cyber security. So I'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, but also management roles, uh, I've been in program management and director roles um, in the past eight years. So that's where I am at. Thank you for allowing me to do this. Yep, and um, hi, my name is Walter Hamlet. Um, I am a network engineer on one of the two programs that Jessica manages. Um, I've been with TechSynap since April of last year. Um, and I've, uh, I've been in, I started my first IT role in January of 2020. Um, so a little less tenured than Jessica, but uh, definitely excited to talk about my experience today. And I do appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for letting us know a little bit more about what you guys do. Um, so we're just going to jump into some of these questions that we have. Um, and you can decide who wants to take the lead on the question. Um, but can you share your career journey and how you got started in your um, respective fields of cybersecurity and network engineering? And what key steps led you to your current roles? Go ahead, Walter. All right, I'll go ahead and take the lead. Um, so getting started in IT for me um, kind of started when my best friend, he actually got out of the Marines um, and he joined the Air Force Reserves um, where he graduated tech school, um, which earns you uh, a certification, uh, an IT certification called Security Plus. Um, and, you know, very soon after he got that cert, he started working a systems administrator job. Um, and, you know, we were talking and he was making some pretty good money at the time. Um, and I just asked him his process of what it was like getting the cert um, and how he was able to leverage that into a job interview. Um, and he had managed that or he had mentioned that getting the cert not only um, gained him the knowledge of, of what the certification entailed, but also um, it allowed him to stand out against other candidates um, with similar skill sets and, and ultimately just land you that interview. Um, so I did the same thing. I started studying for my security plus um, in June of 2019 um, in the hopes of landing an entry level job myself. Um, and almost immediately it was clear to me that I actually didn't really understand the networking side of the house that it, you know, that comes with studying for security stuff. Um, so I felt it'd be important for me to kind of take a step back and maybe study for some networking stuff, uh, instead. <laughs> so, uh, I started studying for a cert also by the same vendor called Network Plus. Um, and during my studies, I'd found that I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it didn't take too long for me to pass that exam, um, about, about five months. Um, and as soon as I passed it, I updated my resume. Um, not only showing that I had the cert, but also I included all the stuff that I learned, you know, while I was studying. Um, so a month after getting that, I landed my first IT job. Um, I was just working on the service desk, um, you know, kind of something, just, just learning the ropes. Right. Um, and I basically picked up studying for my security plus immediately after that. Um, and I got that another six months while I was still cutting my teeth on the service desk. Um, <laughs> And during that time, I had a mentor at work um, and he had kind of pulled me aside for a one on one. And he he let me know. He's like, hey, I know you don't want to be on the service desk, you know, for forever. He's like, so what do you want to do? Um, and I told him that while I was studying for my network plus that I really, really enjoyed learning about networking um, and that I, I think that I would eventually want to be a network engineer. 
And uh, before he was an IT manager, he was a network engineer himself. And so he kind of lit up um, and he was like, oh, dude, if you want to touch a switch or a router, you're going to have to go get your CCNA, which is another certification. Um, so that's what I did. I started studying for my CCNA um, and I, I eventually passed in January of 2021. So I've got a year of service desk under my belt. I've got three certifications um, and some good advice from a mentor. Um, and then I landed my first networking role right after that um, up in Raleigh, North Carolina. So, um, and that was working for Cisco, which is the vendor who has, you know, who, who gives the CCNA out. Um, so during that time, then I just started, you know, it, while I had had a year of IT experience, I didn't have any networking experience. So this first networking job was also really, really important. Um, and I started learning um, and I still kept on studying. Um, and then after about a year and a half at that job, I landed a job at an integrator um, where I was the, the like, kind of the lead on these various route switch and security projects. Um, and I learned a ton at that job, um, just kind of out of necessity. Um, and so I worked that job for about a year until uh, a tech snap recruiter had uh, reached out to me. Um, and I enjoyed, you know, what they said the company was, was working on. Um, the opportunity sounded good. I was in the area. Um, and I took the job and I've been at tech snap, uh, since April of last year. And, uh, I've learned some really cool stuff and I've got to work with some really cool people in the, in the, in the last you know, year and some change. Um, and so that's kind of my, you know, introduction. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that journey. Are you still taking more certs currently or? Yes, ma'am. Um, I actually, funny enough, on Friday, I have an exam scheduled, um, which is for the CCMP. So the CCNA is going to be the associate level of, uh, of networking certs. And the, the, the CCMP is just the next level up. So it's the professional version. Um, yeah. So yeah, my exam is 9.30 a.m. On, on Friday. So Awesome. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So with my journey, um, I definitely didn't know what I really wanted to do in high school. Well, actually, I did. I wanted to go to the military, but my parents really pushed me to um, go the education route. And so that's what I did. I got my bachelor's in information technology. Um, and from there, I started at a help desk, just like Walter. Um, it's one, for one of the bigger organizations here on Fort Huachuca, of which is where Sierra Vista is. Um, in that area. Um, and so from there, the help desk, I basically just kept my ears open. Um, my brother-in-law at the time, he was into IT. He actually transferred from being a nursing student into the IT field, which I started listening to what he was talking about and it just got me interested. So I was asking more what he did. He was a programmer. I tried that. And um, yeah, I do not want to be a programmer by any means was not my thing. But being on that help desk, um, there was a huge cyber entity um, to that organization. So again, just kept my ears open, um, started getting interested, wanted to learn stuff. So I was self-teaching myself at the time and was able to land a job which with an organization that was called Regional Emergency uh, Computer Response Team, an, uh, a CERT. So we did a lot of defensive and op offensive type um, cybersecurity um, efforts. Uh, this was in 2002, before cybersecurity was even a thing. It was called something else. Uh, when I started talking to people about what I do, um, they were just like, is that even a thing, right? So um, as we all know, as technology has evolved, cyber is real, cybersecurity is real. But I started there. Um, I started on the help desk again with the, the CERT. And from there, um, I was able to pivot to other sections, uh, which is the information assurance team. And there I fur furthered my skill set doing vulnerability assessments, penetration testings, where you go out to sites and um, exploit um, their perimeters um, internally and externally, right? Um, so from there, uh, I started getting into the governance and compliance roles, which basically is a framework to ensure that you are in compliance, um, secure, um, and you're maintaining that secure baseline. And then from there, I also got experience and expanded my skill set in what they call um, auditing and validations, um, keeping it in the most commercial uh, language, right? So 
I go out, I would go out to different organizations and basically validate uh, what they say they have implemented as far as security measures are concerned. So that was definitely very interesting. Got to meet um, a lot of different people, um, be involved with a lot of um, different organizations that are out there. Um, so a lot of my career, pretty much all of my career is with Department of Defense. So those are the type of organizations that I've been working with. Um, and so all that, all those skill sets that I've gained, I started becoming or getting into the management role. So I started overseeing cybersecurity type um, programs. And that's where um, I started getting my management uh, experience um, and definitely liking the management role. Um, definitely miss the technical side of things, getting my hands dirty from time to time and getting them on the keyboard, as we like to say, uh, but definitely liking the challenges and um, just the career path um, that the management role has taken me uh, recently, so. Awesome, thank you. I have, So I have two follow-up questions to what you guys have talked about. First of all, for all of us non-cybersecurity people, what is the help desk? <laughs> So help desk is the most um, simplest way. That's your tier one. You know, um, if you have any issues, let's just say um, you have you have um, your cell phone service with Verizon. You call a number. That's your tier one service, right? That is your help desk. That help desk basically listens to your your issue and then um, push it to whatever uh, section or organization or person or however they're set up um, to resolve your your issues that you're having or help you troubleshoot it. So, awesome. So that's what I do on the first website. Entry. Yeah. And it says chat here. Yep. So okay. back in the day when I was starting on the help desk, there was no automated bots or chats or anything like that, how we have it now. So. <laughs> and then when you said a programmer, what is a programmer? A programmer um, is basically making that code. Um, you're coding, you're you're in the back end, you're under the hood, you're writing um, code um, to make an application or make things work or communicate. Um, so it's a lot of what we call a command line interface. Um, someone hates the chat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what coding is. Programming, programming, so I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, and I know you said, um, Jessica, that you got your bachelor's um, before you started getting your certs. Walter, do you have um, like any uh, community college education or uh, university education? I do not have any higher education. Um, it is definitely something uh, on my to-do list, though, um, that, that especially, which um, I think it's really important um, while not required, um, Jessica mentioned we work for the DOD. Um, some contracts will require it. Some promotions will require it. Um, some companies won't even touch you without education. So while I personally don't, um, it is something that you never want it to hold back your career by not having it. Um, so I think that it is, it is incredibly important. Um, and can you tell us, like, if you were to start again, knowing all the information that you have so far, yeah. what would be, like, the first cert that you would get or tell someone, like, these are, yeah. you know, your top three? Yeah, certainly. Um, so one of the things that I would do is it, it's kind of it's kind of a nuanced answer, but and it, it might be a little difficult to decide this. But I think it's really important to think about what job you'd like to eventually have. Um, because the cert, you don't want to go for a cert that hiring managers don't care about. Because ultimately, while the cert is going to gain you some experience, the what the cert really does is get you in front of hiring managers, right? And, get, and passes that HR filter. Um, that's what I like to call it. Um, so I would try to do your best um, to think about the job that you'd eventually like to do. So as an example, if you want to be a network engineer, your CCNA is is honestly your best bet. It really is. If you'd like to do systems engineering, that might be an Azure, like a Microsoft Azure cert. Um, if you want to be like a software engineer, that might just be getting your computer science bachelor's, honestly. Um, so, But you can find out the answer to that question by looking at the job postings 
Um, so, you know, Indeed, LinkedIn um, for cleared work, clearance jobs, and you can see what are those hiring managers asking for. So uh, I know it's kind of a nuanced answer, but specifically for network engineering, I think you can't go wrong with your CCNA. That's awesome. Um, I think that's a really great recommendation to look at what they're asking for, because that's where you're going to get like the direct answer. And so we always tell students just start looking. <laughs> what, yeah, definitely. What, definitely. What, what they're they're needing and what they're wanting. Um, so my next question is, what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced in your career and how did you overcome them? Uh, that was a very good question. Um, and I always enjoy entertaining that question um, because, uh, and I'll take it this route, um, the information technology field is very strong. Uh, with males, and I'll just put it that way. Um, you can only imagine back in 2002, uh, the male majority role and me trying to find my way through the IT path, right? So that was definitely difficult, um, but it's very doable, right? Um, and, it, and it goes to show that, hey, you know, make sure you're understanding what the requirements are for the role, what type of skill sets you need for the role, um, continuously staying curious and teaching yourself, if anything, to further your skill sets. Because once you have that under your belt and you always remain motivated, um, those challenges of what you are faced with, you can easily overcome, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, what speaks louder is your actions, are your actions, right? So those are in, in I hate to say it sometimes, but sometimes it still is a challenge uh, being a female in a, a predominant male um, IT uh, environment, right? So I always keep my A game up. Um, I always keep my ears open, eyes open, um, try to figure out what the next thing is in, in what has to happen in my career. So, um, those are the main, that is the main challenge that I've um, experienced. Um, part two of that, definitely in an IT role and managing IT programs is keeping up with technology as a whole, right? You can only imagine how far we've come in five years. Um, imagine what's gonna happen next week. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that change? So um, ensuring that you are adaptable to whatever whatever comes down the pipe per se, um, that is a challenge because people don't like change, right? <laughs> so that's one thing that being in an IT role as a whole that you have to be prepared for and face. Awesome. And I'm sure that, you know, the those challenges of it being so male dominated has probably led you to be a really great manager because of Walter's giving me a thumbs up. So <laughs> it must be correct. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So my next question is cybersecurity and network engineering are constantly evolving, like you were saying. Um, how do you stay up to date without, you know, ChatGPT taking your job? Or <laughs> what do you do to make sure that you're ahead of the curve with these emerging trends? And what should students do to, you know, should we stay in Reddit? Should we, where do we find this information? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll grab this one, Jessica. <laughs> um, for networking specifically, I think it's really important to kind of pay attention to what the biggest vendors in the space are doing. Um, so that might be like Cisco, Juniper, Arista, Palo Alto, just to name a couple. Um, obviously, they're on like the bleeding edge of all of this and, and seeing what they do um, in their footnotes and all of their conferences um, and their product lines um, is really important. Additionally, though, I use Reddit a ton <laughs> to stay abreast of where the industry is going um and For just about life, not just yeah <laughs> ab absolutely um just to be able to continue to stay marketable um mm -hmm. so just as an example um you know in my short amount of time in being in it um it's it, it was always really clear to me that that network security is going nowhere and, and what i mean by that is that we're always going to need it and we need it more than we needed it you know five years ago and we're going to need it more five years from then too you know so um, people, um, rather corporations spend a ton of money on that because 
it can be disastrous without it. So um, that would be one thing that is, is really clear to me. Um, and then also, um, even in just a short amount of time that I've been in networking, I've kind of seen a shift um, from just staying on the command line, um, which is how you administer networking devices, um, to there's been a shift in um, people needing automation experience because it, it's just where the industry has gone. And, and Cisco's kind of been the you know spearheaded that effort um with with their automation um, ideas and their tools and their certifications so um i i would say being adaptable like jessica had mentioned and and needing to be able to 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 just not be stuck in your ways because it's never going to stay the same i think is really important so um yeah that 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 would be my suggestion awesome thank you um, so my next question is, in your experience, what are the most critical skills that aspiring cybersecurity professionals and network engineers should develop? <laughs> Other than soft skills. Soft skills. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we've mentioned it before and, you know, this, this question kind of leads or follows the answers that we've provided already is just, you know, everything's changing constantly. It's how do you stay abreast of that um, to maintain your skill sets or advance your skill set, right? Um, because people do get stuck in their ways. They become their own obstacle. And once you do that, um, you're going to be left behind. <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but that's the, the, the reality of it. Um, I always say communication. Um, you know, it's, it's a soft skill, but it's it's a skill that everybody should learn and understand um, that it has to happen because, you know, you're talking to IT people. Well, a lot of them, and this is nothing, no ding on anyone, they're geeks. We're all geeks. We communicate one way, right? If, if we're not going to come up for a breath, if we're in the command line and we're down and we're trying to figure something out, um, we have to realize as geeks that we do have to come up and communicate and say, hey, this is what we're still running into and whatnot. So if you're not communicating, I think um, you can create more obstacles that way. Um, so I think also communication is, is key. I don't know, Walter, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, certainly. So I, I had two, two points. Um, it's funny because one of mine was also soft skills. Just being able to, I, I think that I've noticed as I, I got um, just it, more responsibility in, in my role, I needed to talk to leadership and stakeholders significantly more. And I think being able to communicate to those individuals is really important. Um, the other one that I would say for networking specifically is, it's going to sound funny, but the fundamentals. Um, it, it's one of those things for, for networking specifically that the fundamentals, while you learn them in the beginning, those specifically do not change. So you're rewarded even, you know, four, five, six, and so on years into your career by knowing how protocols work and uh, just just the, the various um, rules and such that you learn when you're when you're completely fresh. Um, so being sharp on those, it'll pay you dividends for sure. Um, just the more um, that you uh, go into your career. Awesome, thank you. Um, so what personal branding, um, you know, it's, it's really crucial in today's job market. How do you build your own personal brand in your industry? And what advice do you have for students to establish theirs um, for their resumes or their cover letters? Like, obviously, IT is a vast field. Like, how do you stand out and make yourself one of one when Jack is hiring you? <laughs> I'll let yeah. Walter go first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think this is a really good question. Um, I think, honestly, your resume should tell a story of not only what you've done and what you're currently doing, but also what you'd like to be doing in the future. Um, so I think that same thing can be reflected on your LinkedIn page, um, You know, just based on, um, hey, I am maybe a service desk today, but I would love to be a penetration tester in the future, right? So I went and got this cert or here's my GitHub and here's, you know, here's, here's my repo of the projects that I'm working on. Um, I think that that's really important. Um, but then also I think 
it's worth noting that the industry, while you know we we have IT everywhere, it is smaller than you might realize. And how your coworkers and your leadership view you, I think, is really important. Um, so if you're known as a hard worker, you know, willing to work on the difficult projects or the difficult customers, or or willing to hop on that phone call that no one else is willing to do, I think it could definitely pay dividends for you in the future um, for roles or promotions. Um, you definitely don't want to be known as that individual who constantly is just like, hey, that's not my job. I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely noticeable when that happens. So, so I'll answer it from a hiring manager perspective. Um, definitely um, know what you put on your resume. And I'm just saying that from experience and you see Walter nodding his head up and down, right? Don't just put anything on your resume. Put what you actually have done or are doing to where you can defend your resume, okay? Because, um, again, from a hiring manager perspective, we're going to look at it and we're going to ask you questions against that. So we've we've come across some candidates that was not able to do that. So from my perspective, that's a next, you know, you're just, you're just putting stuff on a page and you don't even know what you're doing, okay? So um, part two to that is, on your cover lever, especially if that is required, definitely um, add a little bit of personal touch. Who are you? You know what I mean? Who is Acacia? Who is Walter? Um, and like Walter said, what do you, you as a person, what are you able to bring to the table? Because that is what I'm listening to when we're interviewing candidates is what is your personality like, right? So if you have a, a team dynamic um, personality and what they bring to the table, actually is a huge difference, right? As far as um, keeping that cohesiveness and collaboration um, intact. So those are the things that I look for as a hiring manager, not the only thing, but those matter to me, right? Um, so yeah, at, be yourself, <laughs> be yourself, um, defend your resume um, and things will work out. Awesome, thank you. Um, the next question I have is about mentors, which Walter, I know you touched on that in the beginning of how your mentor was like very uh, beneficial to you getting into this industry. Um, Jekka, do you have a mentor other than your brother-in-law or? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, th through your career, you always have a mentor of some sort, even though that they never knew they were your mentor, your direct mentor, right? Um, so... Um, yeah, I've had many, um, that I've come across, um, and I still communicate with, um, but I would also like to say that there's also bad mentors you can also learn from, right? So depending on the career path that you want to go to, um, for instance, the management role, I learned from bad managers, um, who were supposedly my mentors at the time, right? Because you look towards your, your, your manager, that's the first person you look to, um, as a mentor. So, um, yeah, I've had many, uh, to list on this call, <laughs> but yes. Awesome. I'm going to go off of my, um, my beaten path questions, but Walter, you had mentioned Cisco. So I'm yeah. sure the students that are, you know, interested in cybersecurity and, um, you know, network engineering, they know what these things are for, but can you enlighten me, someone that is more versed in eyebrows than IT? <laughs> uh, what exactly is, uh, like, what were those different networks, like Cisco and all these, are these, like, industry leaders where you should be going to their conferences and things like that? Like, can you just like, explain that a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think it's a really good question. Um, within the, you know, just the networking field, um, there are going to be some heavy hitters. I think it, just by far and away, the the biggest vendor will be Cisco. It's the equivalent of, you know, well, what's the most popular operating system, right? Well, it's Windows, right? What's the most popular phone manufacturer? It's Apple. Well, for networking equipment, that's going to be Cisco. Um, again, you have some others. Um, if you're looking at just firewalls, I don't think that you can do better than Palo Alto. Um, you know, and then there, there's definitely some competitors to Cisco as well. Um, you know, I mentioned Arista, I mentioned Juniper. Um, I think going to those conferences, um, specifically, just as an example, like Cisco Live is the Cisco conference that they do. 
Um, that's really good, uh, like a great opportunity for multiple reasons. For one, just for continuing education. They have, you know, classes and hands-on like technical breakouts. But I think it can't be understated about how important networking is and not technology networking, but, but networking in the industry. Um, so getting your name out there um, is really important. So um, I would just, um, yeah, if you have the opportunity to go to one of those conferences, if, you, if your um, company can pay for it, if you have the opportunity through, through another means, I definitely would do it. Um, absolutely. Awesome. Um, and my last question is looking ahead, what are your future goals and aspirations? How do you continue to challenge yourselves to grow in your field? And what do you hope to achieve next? You want to go first, Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely uh, my career path and where I see it going is um, continuing the management. Right. So uh, being... Um, supporting the Department of Defense, specifically as a uh, IT services company, which is Texan App. Um, there's many opportunities out there. And within those opportunities, um, there's different roles uh, within management to pursue. And I say that as far as, you know, um, proposals, um, increasing my portfolio in whatever way that's going to look like, um, and just finding out what the new shiny is um, within our means, right? So that's what I'm interested in. That's what I want to um, continue going down a path that I want to continue to go down. Um, as far as um, certifications, I'm definitely looking at my um, PMP. Ooh. I have set my own personal goal to potentially get that by the end of this year. So um, just another certification and, and additional skill sets to learn from those foundations, right, to um, improve my skill sets for management. Yeah, maybe we could take that together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So I know I'd mentioned it earlier. Um, so on Friday, I'm taking my CCMP. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, after a couple years in networking, I, I think it's a really good idea. Um, it's kind of like a next stepping stone. Um, the stuff that you learn in that sort of definitely uh, kind of prepares you for the, for the nitty gritty and the stuff that maybe a senior network engineer um, would be tasked with doing. Um, so that's, it, you know, just continuing my education is definitely a priority. Um, I also mentioned earlier too that I think that network automation is where the industry is going. Um, and honestly already has gone. Um, you, one of the languages that you could pick up, maybe programming languages you could pick up for that is Python. So um, I'm definitely uh, looking to enroll in a class. Um, I just become profi proficient in that. Um, and that's where I'd like to kind of take my, you know, career as of right now, I'm still a little early in networking. So I've only been here for three and a half years um, for, for networking. So um, still, still have a ways to go, but I'm enjoying it so far. Awesome. And it, I would be remiss to ask this last question of, have either of you ever thought about opening up your own cybersecurity, like being an entrepreneur in any sense, or is that like very hard, you should stay with a company or <laughs> what's your opinion uh, on that? Yeah, I've, I've thought about it. Um, I would say, let's say casually. Um, in my job before Texan app, I was tasked, um, for a certain type of project that we found that customers really didn't have the skill set to do. And this was, this was setting up and upgrading a specific Cisco appliance. Um, and as I did, you know, 10 or 12 of them, you know, it was, it was clear that I was pretty decent at it. So I thought about maybe setting up some kind of, you know, something like that, but I think you definitely need to weigh the, the risks associated with that too. So as of right now, I would say no, but it certainly has crossed my mind. That's cool. All the time. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's something interesting with you and, and pursue, right? Um, I think the, the only thing um, that I guess I, the reason why I haven't is just time, right? Um, but it's definitely uh, stuck in my head um, eventually. Uh, I might, but just don't know when. But I'm looking at it as more of consulting um, for um, organizations 
in cybersecurity or, you know, if Walter wants to join, then he can add the networking uh, perspective at, um, to it, you know, but more in the consulting, but yeah, all the time. <laughs> so our next Zoom should be how to sell your cybersecurity to DOD. Sure. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions for Jessica or Walter before we give them back their lovely Wednesday? I really appreciate both of you being here and answering these questions. I know, again, most of the students probably know all the things that you talked about, but I do not. So thank you for, <laughs> thank you, uh, for giving us this opportunity. It was great. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving more of a deep dive into cybersecurity and what it takes to really be in this field that seems very massive to regular people who aren't making code every day. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we will have this series out on YouTube. And then also we have some coming up next week. Um, and every week after that for September. So um, if you uh, have any questions or you want to rewatch it or repeat, it will be up on our startup tree and our website. So thank you so much, guys. Thank awesome. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.